welcome to episode 65 of the It's Just a Hill Cycling 65. Podcast. 65. I am John, and today I am back with Brian St. Pierre, BSP. It's been a while. How are you? It has been a while. It's been a while. A few months almost, maybe. I think so. Could say. Yep, um, I think so. I've been okay. Mm-hmm. Been all right. Yep. Uh, not really riding. Not before, really before riding. Before you even ask, I haven't Let's been riding. Get into it. Uh, what is going on? You haven't well, been riding your bike. Where do you want to start? Let me ask you first. How are you okay. doing? How? Yeah. How good. are you? Good. I'm good. Yep, good. Because, yes, we haven't done the podcast, but we also haven't really seen each other much. No, we haven't seen each other much. Yep. Yeah. The studio moved. Studio moved. Studio moved. Yep. That's big. That's you know? big. Yeah. Do you want to say any more about that or no? No. Okay. I mean, if you know, you know. You know yeah. You've been okay? Yeah, I mean, good. Good. Happy with the new Works studio good. move? Well, good. Yeah, we're happy with the move. It's good. Cool. I don't know why I keep looking at the yeah. shoes. Well, yeah. they're interesting. Yeah, the you know this is it's a different space. This is where I decided yeah. to put the shoes. We got really used to looking around at the old space. Yeah, right. And now we're looking at this space. But who knows? Maybe, maybe I think I want to try to like add some lights to this setup. I've Ooh. got some LEDs, like in a track above. Maybe. Ma- Listen, Go. if you want to stay afterwards Whoa. and we can talk some about it. Gallery lighting. I'm into that. I've got <laughs> I've got some things. These bulbs in here, they can change color. So who knows? Maybe I'll be able to like, you know, soon we'll be able to dial it all in. Ooh. Be able to change lights on the fly, have yeah. things blink in the background. That's a good idea. Have like, you know, yeah. clips come up. We can put a TV behind and have clips come up. I've got I mean, we got tons of ideas. We gotta Damn. talk about it after the show. We could just make the whole thing a green screen. I have a green screen. Why don't you we do, do that? That's a good idea. It's uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. It would be fun to do at least for an episode. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, this actually is a green screen. Imagine that. No, it is. We take a picture of this and we make that the green screen background. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna stop looking back there. Anyway, look at each other or look at the camera. Um, Have you been riding? Yeah, I've been riding. I've been I've been riding less than normal. Yeah. Let's say usually I average about a thousand miles a month. Wow. Last couple months. 800, 850, 860 or something like that. Yeah. I have fine with it. Still a lot of miles. Oh, yeah. Still a lot That's of miles. That's still averaging over 200 a week. Still a lot of miles. And let's be honest, I moved. So I got a lot yeah. of shit going on, you know? Yeah, you've been busy. So that's good. You no, know, no, good. Yeah. Life has been good. I've been busy. Work's been good. Uh, yeah, I've been riding. I ride in different area now. Yeah, which is I nice. was going to say you broke you broke the seal about the fact that you moved. Right, all right. I moved. Uh, the studio moved. And the studio moved. is not just in a different room right. at the old location. You have right. moved, right. and so that means you've been riding in a slightly different, different locations. Yes, I basically moved forty minutes north. Yeah, not to dox myself too much. That's interesting because, like, I do put my address. Like, I guess I haven't put my new address on Strava yet. I put my old address on Strava because I've had rides start there. Yeah, right. Um, I do like hide my location when I do a ride, so I yeah. guess no one knows my location or the location of the studio. Right, those are two different places. Um, they don't know yes, where I moved to or where the studio moved to. That's you correct. know what I mean. So, that being said, yeah, I do ride in a different area now. But basically, I feel like I'm doing the same thing. Like, I just ride my bike into Connecticut, and mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah. it's You know what I will yeah. say? It is hillier. Oh, yeah. And what what it, I think what that more equates to is there are less flat options. Yes, right? definitely. When I lived in Richmond, south of 138, which is the road I lived on, one, like a big main drag that goes east to west in, mm-hmm. in the southern Rhode Island, south of that is pretty flat. Yes. And north of it was pretty hilly yes. around here. I guess south of here is a little bit flatter, but I also haven't been riding for much south. I've been riding out west into yeah. Connecticut or like north, like yeah. Barville. Yeah. And you know? I saw that you did uh, like oh. a tri state ride the other day yeah. that you dipped into the south portion yes. of Massachusetts Correct. and then the, shall we say, very northeast corner of Connecticut. Correct. And then back southwest yeah. to your house or whichever direction you did it. I'm yeah, sure. no, that's But right. I remember doing. From my house, which is yeah. like southeast of here, yeah, doing a ride exactly like that or m- multiple. Listen, and it was you know for me it was a long ride to to get out there because it's a it, like round trip to get from my house to here is around like twenty five miles is almost it? round trip. 
Oh, round trip. Right, round right, right. Trip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. those would be to long. Add 25 those would be, miles onto a ride. Yeah. yeah like right. that ride you did the other day was like, was it like 60 ish right. or 40 ish? Yeah, I think there? so. I've so done, either way, yeah, it's sure. a long ride for me to go out and do that sure, sort sure. of tri state ride, but I did yeah. a, like a very similar thing multiple times. Yeah. And it was really nice. Nice you know, experience. you are someone that has ridden around here much more than me, especially in the last, like, say, two years, right? Even though you're like, I don't ride my bike anymore, which we'll get into that. Don't think you've skirted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I had you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, when I, I'm be honest, I think about you when I ride these roads. Durfee Hill, yeah. you told me about Durfee Hill. Oh, 100%. Durfee I went on it today. I oh. went on it northbound today. Ooh. Go not, but I go both. I only did it one time northbound. I've done it more often north than I've gone the other way because I like to go out to whatever that is. That's Putnam Pike and then mm-hmm. hit uh, Reynolds Road and then go like out into Connecticut from there. Gotcha. Um, I haven't done it the other direction. I, I will have to, I have with you. And it's like just nice. And so that whenever like Gleaner Chapel is another, you know, oh, yeah. Be, yeah. Be a, in my head is a BSP road, you know, <laughs> like roads that you like have talked about or we have talked about before, yeah. you know, yeah. mostly, honestly, good climbs because it is a lot hillier around here. I rode 46 miles today and with about like 38, mm. you know, 100 feet wow. of climbing. Right. Yeah. But like even in, um, I feel like it'd be good. like in Richmond, it'd be like 3000, you know, it might be mm-hmm. like over that sort of threshold of 50 feet per mile which i yeah. think is like the difference between like a flat ride and like a rolling hills ride right hmm. it's not quite i mean who are we kidding it's new england there's yeah. no there's no fine line but that's sort of yeah. the, the right. rules that and there's no like 40 ourselves. minute climbs you know what i mean people are going to be like well in italy it's like yeah i get it you know <laughs> well you just take what you just take what you fucking got you know what i mean um yeah, we got what we got. We got yeah, the we hills. We got Durfee Hill. We just have hills. I got Durfee Hill, all right? Yeah. I got, I'm got. i going around Jeremoth Hill. I'll tell you, I've ridden on a couple of roads that I shouldn't have ridden on. No business being on. Like Route 6, out where it's like fucking oh. 50 miles per hour. But yeah. that's, I'm 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 also trying to get good at like learning the roads and not just like just making a route all the time. You know what I mean? But that's been fun. But now back to you. Not been riding as much. Where are we starting? Can we talk about what? Now, listen, you edit the audio of this, so you can bleep this out <laughs> if you want. Can we talk about the bike debacle? Because, like, look, if, as long as you're happy, are you happy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> happy with what? Life? Not riding? No, no. I guess, I guess uh, what I was going to say, as long as you're happy, it doesn't matter if you ride your bike or not. Uh, That's what I was going to say. I think I would be happier if I was riding my bike. Okay. Now you've had a little bit. I just bit, haven't been. You, but you also had a little bit of a mechanical yes. snafu, if you will. That's truly where it stemmed from. My lack of riding in right. the past month has really stemmed from that. Right. Which, oh, it stemmed from it. I <laughs> <laughs> I had a yeah. uh, I had a crack in my steerer tube. Yep. And well, I've taken the bike in for a tune-up. No, you've probably talked about not not to rewind it too yeah. much. Yep. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's okay. But you've talked about, the, you know, there's a, there's a knock. You talked about the knock. Have you talked about it on the podcast? Or you've talked to me about it. Probably not on the podcast. You were no. chasing something down. Yeah, yeah, for, for a, a little, little while, while now. Chasing a, yeah. a noise down, which, let's be honest, we all know can be like so yeah. hard. You don't know where it's coming from. You bring it to someone. Yeah. You know, mechanics can only do so much. They're not like riding the bike the same as you. So like you can be like, oh, I think I hear it from here. But yeah. like sometimes it's impossible. Yeah. And so I'm sorry. Turns yeah. out. It's just like when you have a noise in your car and yeah. you bring it in right. and then the mechanic has to drive it. They might drive around the block and say, oh, I didn't hear anything. Right. And give it back to you. Right. Great. Yeah. Right. But no, it, it, was, a, it was a little more cut and dry than that. I was, I was more having an issue with... It almost it almost seemed like no matter what I did with tightening my headset bolts, yeah, the whole front end was just like loosening up minutely over time, yeah. And so I brought it in for a tune up, um, and to get checked out, to to get that front end checked out. And it turned out there was a bit of a crack in the steer tube. Um, they really believed that it was from a defect in the layup that there was yep. a little bit of a void where who believed that the shop or uh, the bike manufacturer the shop yeah okay um this is and, MBX, and you can right? see it you after they pointed at, it out happened at MBX. it happened at mbx yeah, yeah so john and ben both agreed it looked like it was a defect in the layup where the where the where the sheets the final sheets or however many sheets were wrapped around uh-huh. where the wraparound ended there was a void and that's where it cracked um, Remember when we went to freaking Ben's yeah. carbon shop, July bikes? 
I remember that. <sighs> Man, I, you think I talk whenever someone says carbon layup, now I actually think I know what it means. Before <laughs> I, I didn't now, really know what it means. Now I can picture it. Now I'm like, oh, cool, like layers with epoxy, like yeah. cool. Well, I mean, I actually remember and we're looking at your look like uh, a trainer right now. Yeah, it's but I, I remember watching. And I think it was a GCN video, but they did oh, like yes. a factory tour of the yes, look and they factory. Showed how, and they showed how they're right. in the term layup. Yeah. It's almost like paper it really mache. From, it's all, yeah, almost. Like yeah. Carbon fiber all and like sheets an epoxy are actually being on. laid together yeah. and shaped right. and then a, epoxy or whatever, whatever right. the materials are. Right. Um, and you know what else blew my mind? Oh. Let's take it off topic. Okay. Thinking about the tour of July with Ben. Yep. July bikes. July bikes. Yes. That to set the epoxy to lock everything in, yeah, was not a high temperature. No, it was like 112 right. degrees Fahrenheit right. or something like right. that. It was not. I thought they were gonna have to bake it at like 500. No, it's something about like it's, whatever that chemical just, yeah, is. It's it just, just that needs chemical like 112. Reaction. Yeah, just yeah. have to get to a certain temperature. And Las it was, Vegas in and it was August. Low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, climate stuff. Yeah. Climate uh, stuff. 112, I feel like 112 is not even like a crazy thing anymore for summers in all different areas. I was just watching something about Oregon the other day uh -huh. where they had like sustained temperatures within the past few years in the height of summer that were like in around 115 to 120. Wow. In, Oregon. in certain urban areas of Oregon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like in suburbs of Portland and things like that. Anyway, yeah. uh, so I had a crack stem. Yeah. Steer tube. Steer tube. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, the steerer tube is the part of the bike above the fork that comes into the main frame of the bike, that above the frame of your bike, which is your head tube, right? So the steerer tube goes into the head tube, and the stem goes on top of that, if you didn't know. Yeah, your stem, steerer stem tube. Connecting the, that connects to the handlebars that will then right. steer right. the, the stem bike. then connects to the steerer handlebars. Tube. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I was able to get There's a better way of a saying new it. one. You explained why it's called a steer no, tube. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, you we added just, to it. The addition was great. Yeah, it was. It was a great addition. It was teamwork. Okay, so it happened, uh, and you said, and everyone is like, "Well, we think it's a manufacturing thing." So you yeah, call the manufacturer. So I call the manufacturer. You, you say, "Hey, I know you in, just changed your name with all this <laughs> oh, marketing." That's what they did. They did. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you don't want to say the bike name? We can just allude to it. They just changed their they name. They just changed their name. Yeah. People that know who I am know what type of bike I ride. But if you don't know me, then you don't know. And whatever. Yeah. We don't need to. We're not trying to talk uh, shit about it. Stuff no, I'm not happens, trying to. I'm not right? trying to shit talk you know, the company. Shit happens. Um, I'm, I'm really not. I mean, they have full lifetime warranty for their products. Right. And now this was the second time that I had to put in a claim yeah. and they sent me what I needed right. each time. Um, will I be buying a bike from them in the future? Most likely not. Right. Uh, but Most yeah, people so, don't so, buy the same bike brand every single time anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? They sent me a new fork yeah. from the warranty claim. That one seemed like it got damaged Oh. in shipping. Right. So then they had to send me another one. Yeah. So already from the time of needing to drop the bike off of the shop, right? Wait for I, them to check it, which wasn't long. They obviously they get they're good with all that. Yeah. Then I'd put in the warranty claim, then find out they're going to ship it. Took a week to get in. Yeah. I bring it in. I'm like, yeah, what do you guys think? Oh, this looks damaged again. I'm like, yeah, I don't think we should put that in unless you contact them and they say it's good. But because the fork I, was shipped to you and then you brought it to the shop. Yeah, and then I gotcha. brought it to the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed there was a little thing on it. Yeah. And I was like, uh. Did the box I look damaged and shipping? The box looked a little damaged. Yeah. So then waiting more time for a second fork to come in. Yeah. And then the time for it to be rebuilt, which also was very quick. So it's not like those tail end, the top and tails of dropping the bike off yeah. the shop took the time. It was more just waiting and waiting and waiting. So already I had, I had, had like four or five weeks off the bike just because of that. Right. And uh, just haven't really gotten back to it. I mean, I've... I've like spun around the neighborhood on the bike path a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I did put it on the trainer a couple of days ago, a few days ago, did a little like 45 minute spin. Yeah. And that's all I've done. Hey. Yeah. But that's all right. it, I mean, because every time of year not to ride your bike. Because too, I have be not honest. been riding anywhere near as much this year. Yeah. And then having those like almost like a forced four or five weeks off the bike. Right. Right. And then it got really cold all of a sudden. Yeah. And there was a lot of very cold days. Yeah. And I had my bike back. I yeah. I was like, uh, right. I don't really feel like going outside right now. I'm freezing. Yeah. I like, 
I have other things that I'm working on right now. So. Oh, that's, you know, as I, and I have a reminder in my phone that's going to go off in five days that's going to tell me, do not ride your bike outside every day in December, you <laughs> idiot. You hated it last year. And so I won't be doing that shit. <laughs> I thought about that like and yesterday so, or today. You say that you look at my look that's here. It's sitting on the trainer. I just signed up for a two-week trial of Zwift again mm. to at least like, you know, I'm sure I'll at least buy two months of it, you know, because like it's so much easier. I rode outside today. Don't get me wrong. It was 45, 50 degrees. It was sunny. Yeah, it was so nice it wasn't out. that bad. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I do still enjoy the outdoors, but like sometimes it just takes like it, it takes an extra f 20 to 40 minutes between getting dressed and getting undressed and yeah. like, you know, making sure you have the right stuff. And the cold does like, you know, it only so much cold is like good for you too, right? It like burns calories in a different way because it's trying to keep you warm. So like, I don't know, I, I I'm definitely won't, won't be like riding in like 25 degree weather all the time. And I certainly won't ride, be riding my bike outside every single day in December. It's a good time of year to like, you know, and sure, if being forced off the bike sucks, like, having that shit happen to your bike, like no matter yeah. what, that sucks, right? Yeah. Like, so having someone else be, or something else be responsible for you not being able to ride your bike, that's a pain in the ass. But like, as someone that personally has taken a step back because other things have like become priorities, you know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily a bad thing. What the fuck, what are we doing? We're not riding the tour, you know? No, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think this past year of like dialing things back was, yeah. Right, we've talked about that a lot. For my mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've, yeah. Yeah. Like I've beat that over the head yeah, on this yeah. podcast, so I'm yeah. not going to get into that again. Yeah. But So what are you thinking? You Now, yeah. we haven't mentioned the name of the bike. You think you're going to keep the bike? You're gonna, are you in the market for a new bike? It's kind of a it's kind of a buyer's market. Sellers are being really weird on, the, on secondhand bikes, I feel like. They still think they can get a lot of money because the COVID boom made them think that they could. Mm -hmm. But there are like bike prices um, are like, not, I mean, they're high. There are dumb, stupidly priced bikes that are like thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Uh, but where, where, what are your thoughts on that? Are you gonna? Are you, do you want to ride this bike? Like, say it's sixty degrees and you got a free Sunday, and I don't mean the ice cream tree. I mean you have a Sunday that's free, <laughs> and you're like, hey, I'm gonna go, you know, ride thirty miles, right? I'm not saying you gotta go out and do, right? What, what are your thoughts on that with this bike? Is there, has there, do you? I don't know, like. I feel badly saying it. We haven't said the name of the bike. If you know, you know. But like, does it hurt your confidence in the bike? Fuck, I hit the mic. Does it, you know what I mean? Like, is it, does it affect you in that way, right? Like. No, I don't think so. No, okay. I yeah. don't think Good. it It doesn't affect me in that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I more just worry about the bike's value. What do you mean? Like, should I get rid of it? Mm. While it still has some value so that I can get into a new bike with right. more, you know, carryover equity, if you will, right. so towards something else. I guess so I can get something a little more updated with like more updated drivetrain. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think I'm already past that window. If that window ever existed, really, yeah. for having good equity in it, I don't know. But I think the value that I could really get for it now, I'll probably just keep it. Yeah, My only worry is the life of that that drivetrain and those components because yeah. you know the way they're always updating things it's a mechanical yeah but it'll still work set. you know what i mean it's not going to stop working it's like a solid group set oh yeah yeah it's not going to stop working i just yeah. worry about like if i if i am going to just keep it indefinitely yeah, yeah, and yeah. ride it for another yeah. 5 to 10 years like yeah. i'm going to need service on it and sure. will it be hard at a certain point sure. to be getting certain parts for it? That's my only thought. Yeah, to be but getting parts like, for it, you're right, right. I don't know. At that point, whatever. I don't know. As long as I have a bike to ride. Yeah. 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 So so my thoughts right now is I'm just going to keep riding it. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. keep it. Yeah. It's great. I, mean, I, I mean, I think it's a great bike. Oh, sure. Uh, it's a great it's a great bike. You enjoy riding it. Um, I like the way it looks. It has a good group set. Yeah, it's a nice looking bike. It's a decent bike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm... I'm Pretty comfortable on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and I only say pretty because I was more comfortable on the gravel bike that I had. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I've really, I've enjoyed this bike. Yeah, yeah. No problem. I've done, you know, yeah, long Big rides, rides on it. Yeah, for sure. I've been yeah. pretty damn comfortable on yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm good with it. Yeah, great. I like the way it looks. I got the updated reserve wheels. And oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's nice. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, nice enough. I almost feel like a poser on it. I'm riding around. And it's like just doing 20 miles at a time, and I and I have these like a, sort that, of like <laughs> relatively deeper carbon rims, and I'm like, eh. for a little yeah. while, I felt uh, somewhat worthy of what I had, but now it just feels oh. a little overkill. Oh, but do you mean that? Do you mean that for real? Somewhat yeah. worthy. So, do you <laughs> think there is a? Do you think if this is other people who will look at you and 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 be like this guy's not worthy of this bike because he's only doing twenty miles on Strava? What where is that coming from? Yeah, I guess. So. Do you think someone's seeing you on Strava or someone's seeing you in real life? I don't. I don't think it would seeing you on the bike path with your deep dish wheels <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah. look at this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that's what's no, happening? No, I don't think it would really ever happen. No, I hope not. My my thought is, I guess, to be fully transparent which I know this would never happen, but yeah. if I ride by somebody else uh-huh. and they seem like they, they're, they you know... Like almost a know, hardo? Like a real hardo or yeah, like yeah. they ride a lot or more than yeah. me and they, they know, you know, whatever. Uh-huh. That if they if they actually knew how many miles I was doing that day <laughs> yeah. or how many miles I do on, in a week or something, they'd yeah. be like... Dude doesn't need that bike. That sucks. Need those though. wheels. They, no one should be thinking that. I know. I'm sorry that that. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Man. That uh, if anyone is doing that, that person sucks. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know? I don't let it get to me, but I just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would be lying. Imagine if that I said someone that goes on like their flybys on Strava, and they're like, "Oh, that right. guy that I saw, he looked pretty. He looked pretty slick. He looked pretty quick. I wonder how far he went." Yeah, and it was like 14 miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they just did 12 miles. At, yeah. 13 uh, <laughs> But now yeah. we're getting into, now we're being hypocritical so we're making fun of it. But No, we're making fun of the person that judges it. I'm not making fun of your <laughs> ride. I'm making fun of the jerk yeah. that would yeah. think that. Right. Yeah. Right. Because like, um, that's the thing that like, I, and we're going to talk, we're going to go and we're going to talk about Strava in just a bit, but like, we're going to talk about some of the changes that they've made recently. But the, these are the things that like, I think that like, I truly think I don't know who the fuck said this. I don't know what what this quote is from, but comparison is the thief of joy, right? Mm. And when we're talking about racing, right? Racing is racing. And I think that's a pretty good, fair level playing ground. And I think competition is good as long as it's like healthy competition and pushing people to be competitive. And that's a lot of the reasons why people like to use Strava, right? Is because of like, whether you're talking about like KOMs or segments or what I'm really proud of is grabbing all these local legends around here up in the up in northern Rhode Island. You might be taking some of mine. I just took a one on Durfee Hill today, actually, but going that way. I'm sorry if I took yours. No, it wouldn't Let's, have been mine. We no. live closer. Do you want to do you want to be motivated to ride? I'll motivate you to ride. Let's ride together 25 miles. It doesn't even need to be fast. It's just 25. You know what I mean? I'm here for you if yeah. you want me to be here for you and ride with you. Thank you. We're closer. I'll ride to you so you don't have to do the extra 25-mile loop. I'll just ride to you. I'll do the extra 25. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I and was, it can be 14 I was miles. thinking about that. Like, if, yeah. we, if we were to meet up in between yeah. our houses, the, the route would need to be, like, so specific. And it might be weird for either one of us. We might like be doubling back a little bit. Who just cares about the, but like, yeah, who you know, cares? I'm trying to get over it's that. It's all too. miles, right? I used to be like all, it's all picky. riding your bike. Yeah, I used to be super picky about like loops. Yeah. Around here, there are the roads are less. There are less roads yeah. to ride on. The roads are just like not as densely around. I guess I'm saying this like an idiot, but you understand what I'm saying. There are less roads to ride my bike on. So the route that I like to take out. It's sometimes it's the same route that I want to take back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who cares? That's kind of what I do a lot, too. Who cares if it doesn't look like a fun loop? I used to be such a loop. Listen, I still like loops. I Listen, not to pat myself on the back. I don't know why I keep saying listen, but obviously <laughs> that's kind of my inner monologue when I do podcasts. Listen, you know. Um, but I think I make a good route. Like, but sometimes I care about what it looks like, and that's stupid. You know? <laughs> But that's yeah, not what I that, know. I know what you mean. That's not the real problem with Strava that I'm talking about. Is like the competitiveness that comes with Strava, or like the comparison, right? Yes. And as someone that rides their bike a lot, I know that I ride my bike a lot. I feel lucky that I get to ride my bike a lot, right? I feel lucky that I get to say I only rode 850 miles because that's not only, right? I don't really mean that like only. I'm proud that I ride my bike that much. I mean, it's just in comparison to myself, because I truly think that like 
comparing yourself to your former self is way more productive than comparing yourself to someone else on Strava. And whether it's how many hours they get on the bike, how many miles they ride, how many KOMs they get, you know what I mean? Like we really don't have a full scope of what everyone has going on, right? We only have a scope of what they're doing on Strava. And so someone could very much look at my Strava over the past two months and be like, John hasn't been riding as much. And first of all, if you have been, you gotta you should be spending your time much <laughs> more productively. But that's a silly way of thinking. It's not a productive way of thinking. You know what I mean? And so it's if other people think that way, whatever, right? But then you're right. There is like a part in the back of my head that I'm like, well, if that person is thinking that, like maybe I should be riding more. And it's like, that's like toxic as hell. Like that's not productive, you know? That and is not good. That's I, the, I hope that you or anyone is thinking that. I'm no, sure no, some I, people are, but no, I'm sure some people good. are. No, then that's not good. And that's, and that's not, the point of what we're saying. And that's like the non productive side of like the yeah. social media part of yeah. Strava, right? And I do like, I owe a lot to Strava for like helping build the club, you know? Like, mm-hmm. there are a lot of members on Strava, like for the Chester Hill Club. And most of those people don't ride with us. Right, because it's like in the it's like over a thousand. Yeah, I just people, saw it's over right? a thousand. It's like eleven 1, hundred and something, yeah. right? Yeah. But for some reason, our the way that I use Strava as outreach for it's just like for it's just a hill, for whatever reason, people join the group, right? And that's how I promote it. I I just like plug it constantly on YouTube videos, whatever, and people join it. And it's not even like that big of a number, but way less people actually um, ride with us. But that being said, it has helped, and it's. I mean, I pay for it, but I think you could still run a club without having to pay for Strava. Mm, um, I, I do pay for Strava for a year. What is it, $75 now? Do you know? No, I don't It used know. to be like 64 I want to say it's like $75 now. It's probably uh, somewhere around there, yeah. If I'm way off, I guess I'll put it below yeah. in the video. But it is... I also think that because that we pay for it, we're allowed to like criticize it. So recently in the news, and I put this in the show notes, I'm not sure how much of this that you read, but Strava recently announced that like they, they've made a bunch of changes to their API, which basically is going to make it harder for third party apps to use like your Strava info. So if you use Strava, whether or not you pay for it, this will affect you. And Strava recently announced significant updates to its API policies, which are creating concerns among developers of third party apps. These changes aim to enhance user privacy and security, but come with tighter restrictions on how Strava data can be used. So before I brought this up for the show, had you heard about this? I had not heard about it. No, okay. I actually have not even really been going on Strava because I haven't been riding yeah. my my walks, and, and I have been doing a little bit of weightlifting here and there lately too. All that stuff just automatically imports from my watch over to Strava. Oh, yeah. So like yeah. opening it up to make sure that like I'm not showing all my little... I don't know, half mile or one sure. mile dog walks all the time yeah. are going up there. I'd like, I'll yeah. open up the app and make sure that I switches to private. Private. Yeah. Um, so I'm not annoying people, but uh, yeah, no, I didn't know. I hadn't heard anything of it. I haven't been paying attention. I will, all. And I will so. say before I just talk shit about Strava for the next like 10 minutes or so, because I, you know, not to uh, get too far ahead of ourselves, but this doesn't seem like a good thing that they're doing. The uh, quick edit thing on Strava on mm-hmm. the app, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, okay. Well, you're not even, you don't even care that much. No, I don't care that much. All right. So you hadn't heard about this. No, you, but the reason I say, I don't know. Yeah. Because I'm a little bit confused as to how it works because I it doesn't, it shows me like not even the current thing that just imported. And maybe it's because I didn't go to like, the like last Maybe it's ones. like giving me a backlog or yeah, maybe it's yeah. just simply giving me my oldest one. You know what I mean? So I'm a, li- I'm a little bit confused of... Yeah, I'm not sure how, how and when it's showing me. So that. I will say it only shows up when you're like on the home tab, which is like the bottom left button. If mm-hmm. you're on the app, like yeah. seeing everyone else's uh, activities, mm-hmm. if you're like just on your profile tab or something, yeah. it won't, the quick edit won't pop up. So what will happen for me is like, I'll do yoga, not open Strava, and then I'll do a ride and then open Strava and it will only show me the ride. The mm. yoga has already been uploaded. Okay. But, and I think I've said this before, my, all of my activities are default to private. So all of my yeah, activities yeah, upload no matter what. Yeah. And like, depending on my mood, I make them public or not. Most of, I will say 99% of my rides are public unless I'm like sneaking around the reservoir, which 
I need to look at some maps because I really want to try sneaking around the reservoir. Put, saying it on the podcast is not a good idea because so let's just say um, this is parody. This is parody. Um, what do you think? You think that someone will see you? DM's going to see you? Did you hear what happened to the vegan cyclist? No. He got banned from Yosemite. Now, really? I don't have the same, we don't have the same reach as the vegan cyclist. Really? But he got banned for Yos- from Yosemite for like three months, and he's on probation for nine months or for 12 months, hmm. uh, and he has to pay a fine because he rode his bike on a walking path, um, but he documented oh, wow. it and put it in a video, and he very quickly realized that he was riding where he shouldn't be and was like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't be here. Let me turn around. But... I think in somewhat way of setting an example of, yeah. you know, him, which is unfortunate for him because he like lives close by and like he really likes riding there, you know, but like if people don't take the rules seriously and you're broadcasting it, you know what I mean? Like if someone else sees him do it and they want to do it, that's part of like, he is an influencer, you know? Right. Yeah. So if he influences people to do the wrong thing, that's not good. And yeah. I think that's sort of the, what's the goal that's being set. So yeah. If I were to hypothetically say I were to ride, I wanted to ride my bike in a place that I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't talk about that on the podcast. But this is still parody. It's parody, and <laughs> this is why you're not you, actually. I'm not actually thinking about it. Like I would that. never do that. No, I, ah. big we're big rule followers. Yeah, you can here. only ride around the reservoir one day a year. Tortorodi, Tortorodi, baby. Yeah, September Tortorodi. Yeah. And then also aside from the days that you do the recon. Yeah, right. The recon uh, day. Which who's to say when those days are? Yeah, exactly. Strava. Third-party apps can only display a user's activity data to that specific user, ensuring that user data isn't publicly shared through external platforms without explicit consent. So basically that means if you are using Strava as an aggregate to like record data, you cannot put that data elsewhere. So like, will that affect like trainer road? Will that affect like joint cycling? Will Mm. it affect the way that you can share activities outside of the platform what it seems like is it's not only going to be for people that record activities on strava itself like opening your phone and starting a ride but people that like use it like me i mean i record my ride on a on a garmin don't you you on a wahoo right yeah and then you upload it to strava from there yeah it's also saying that it's going to affect that because like strava is being used as the aggregate in between your head unit and whatever training app that you use or Mm. you know whatever Mm. right and so strava's terms now ensure its distinct features and interface are not replicated by third-party applications so they're trying to like up the integrity of their platform that's what what it says at least but it it does seem like they're basically um making it hard for other apps to like i don't know because maybe they see it as like they're piggybacking off their success right strava is a very successful app um, I wouldn't say it's super expensive. You got seventy five dollars a year. The root building feature is like pretty good. I mean, I use it a lot. I don't think it's flawless by any means. It, it it makes mistakes and it does weird things. But I seem to like it more than like ride with GPS or I mean, who. No yeah. one uses Kamut. I'm not using Kamut to make a route. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, I, so, for me, the the main reason I paid for it was just for the route building. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. gotten better too. I think I think the route building has even gotten better. Yeah. I haven't used it in a while. Maybe a year. There's still like weird spots where like it won't let me go a certain way. Like it actually happens around here on uh, Turtle Lot Hill and Paris Irons. I, I think the two roads are that run parallel with each other. Uh, uh, Turtle Lot Hill and yeah, Paris Paris Irons and uh, and um, the one you mentioned before that you said you thought of me not, not right over. It. That's like that's parallel with uh, not yeah, parallel, not but it's Bungie Road. road. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said you Gleaner said Chapel. Earlier. Gleaner Chapel. Yeah, what's the one right next to Gleaner? There's one like parallel with Gleaner Chapel. Yeah, That's I don't know. The one that you, can't, is, yeah. you can't map that one. Right, right, right. Yeah. It did, makes you go the other way. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one. There's another one um, right off of uh, like connecting central north to uh, like 101. See, I'm so I'm or Danielson good. Pike. I, I got to get better at the, at the that it doesn't numbers. it doesn't show up when you look at the map and even uh-huh. if you zoom in all the way. Uh huh. It's not Jackson it Schoolhouse. Is doesn't it doesn't show up. No, not Jackson Schoolhouse. No. Okay. No. Did they like in situate in situate? Oh, okay. Not up that high. Not bungee. No, not bungee. No. 
All right. Yeah, but there are some roads for some reason in this area. No, obviously we know Tortolot Hill does not connect all well, the way to the other side of Tortolot Hill. Well, guess who tried? Guess who bombed all the oh, way down gosh. Tortolot Hill? Going south. Yeah. Yeah. I bom- and, then I it's like, just a, and then it's just a cul-de-sac at the bottom. It's a cul-de-sac at the bottom and, and a single up. trail, a single track yeah. trail into the woods. Over like a body, over like a little river. Yeah. And I was like, I am not taking my, I looked at the map and I was like, oh man, it's like almost as long as it was the amount that I just came down on the road. And I was like, I'm not going through the woods on my road bike. You know, I'll ride on a gravel road on my road bike. I was not going on that. No, no freaking way. Not. You saw a trail though? There's a trail like Hmm. sort of to the right. I wonder if it's private though. Oh. Someone know. that we both know quite well and I've ridden bikes with a bit and has been on this podcast told me that you can ride through there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. He's like a mountain biker by heart, so mm. you never know. Yeah. Um, I feel like I know who you're talking about. You can believe his name. It's uh, <laughs> uh, so, so Strava did clarify that these updates are intended to protect user data and maintain trust in its platform. They anticipate the impact will be limited to a small percentage of applications. So here's the thing. The developers, they received a 30-day notice, which has been criticized by most as like insufficient time, especially during the holiday period where like most apps go on like freeze. Like they don't really do updates this time of year because people are traveling, they're not on their home Wi-Fi a lot. So they tend to like not want to mess with apps too much so that you don't get like messed with or get frustrated with their product. So Mm. that doesn't seem like they're really being helpful in that concern. People basically have said, and there's been a little, there's been a good amount of criticism I've seen about this online, but if you're concerned how this might affect your app integrations or usage, consider reaching out to developers of the tools you use or directly monitoring uh, updates from Strava. So talk to the people that you use or reach out to Strava and be like, hey, this doesn't like as a user, I don't like this, right? Because how can you or how can I as a user not support them? Well, I could not pay, you know? I use this app called Epic Ride Weather. I think we've talked about it mm-hmm. before, right? I'm not sure we've talked about it before on the show. Yeah, I don't it's know a, if we have. It's a small app. I pay for it for the year. I want to say it's $12, 14 yeah, it's for the year. It's pretty cheap. And it's a cool app. It's a cool app. Useful. What it What it does is you upload your route into the app that you're going to do, right? So today I was going to ride 46 miles. I upload the route. I, I say how fast I think I'm going to go, 17 miles per hour. I say what time I'm going to leave, 10 a.m. It gives you... Wow, multiple times. This is much more intimate, me hitting the mic, me <laughs> sitting closer to you. Um, you upload your route into the app, and it tells you what the weather is going to be on your ride for how long and how long you're going to ride. So at 17 miles per hour, leaving at 10, you're going to do this 46-mile route You know, in two hours and 40 minutes. And when you leave, it's going to be 46 degrees. When you get home, it's going to be 50 degrees. And this is the wind. Mm-hmm. It's a great app. Great app. It's a great tool. Um, I use it quite often. Um, and it's unfortunate that someone like that might be affected, you know, cause it's a good tool that I like to use. And like, I'm sure this person is not whoever the app developer is. They're not making millions of dollars off this app. It's a pretty niche app. I'm sure yeah. not a lot of people have it yeah. and they're charging a very reasonable amount of yeah. like a dollar a month. Yeah. And this was after, like, I want to say it was a, it was a good trial period. It was at least a two week trial period, if not a month trial, yeah. you know, like I tried it for a month and was like, yes, I'm in. I'm going to buy this. And I've bought it a couple of times now. Yeah. And that, it just seems a little bit tone deaf. No one seems really happy with Strava about it. Um, well, so let, let me ask you this. Yeah. It, it, they're saying it has a lot to do with privacy and not allowing other apps to be accessing your data. Yes. And be exchanging your data. Right. But as you've pointed out, there are so many other apps like training, yeah. you know, information platforms yeah. and even Epic Ride Weather, things like that that rely on the importing and exporting of that Strava data. Yeah. So are they really going to make it so that, are they really just black and white making it that other apps cannot be getting that information from Strava? Or is it just going to have to be that developers are going to have to recode and rework their systems so that they're written in a way that the users will have to give express permission again yeah so I, for that app to be using the information from it i think it's probably so more so it's more just to give is it is it more just to give us control over what apps are going to be taking the data and using the data or are they really making it so that your strava information 
cannot be utilized by any other apps. No, I, I do think there's very much a world where some apps are able to be, um, let's say nimble enough to like change their code in the next 30 days and like make it happen. And yeah, have users like accept new permissions or, you know what I mean? Cause basically we're, we're already sort of doing that, right? Like when a little box comes up and says, do you want right. to allow permissions? Yeah. You're allowing, you know, join yeah. cycling to use your Strava data. You're allowing yeah, right. whoever it is to use your Strava data. Yeah. They're, As I was saying it, I right. was like, right. in my head, I thought about, it's so they always it's already a thing. You always, you always have to say yes. You can take. I the think data. it's going to so be. What is what is this? So I I think like for let's say Garmin, it's not going to matter. They have enough money. They have enough capital. They'll be able to put people to the task and get the get the data changed. Companies like Epic Rideweather, which you know it, I I'm pretty sure is one person. You know, a, a hobbyist. Yeah. yeah, very well could be. Uh, you know, yeah, for sure. Maybe uh, maybe hobbyist is like selling them short. They make a great app. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a developing. You know, maybe maybe they work on apps for a living, but this is like their pet project or whatever. You yeah. know, like just one of the things they did it, to. It's a great app, but it also job. like it isn't like super fancy. I mean, there also aren't t crazy ads on it. You know, like after you pay for it, it's yeah. a it's a very solid app. I, yeah. I really can't speak highly enough for yeah. it. They could, should fucking sponsor. Yeah, I was gonna say we should get sponsored yeah, by yeah, Epic yeah. Ride Weather. Yeah, yeah, I love Epic Ride Weather. Um, but it, if I ever ride my bike again, I'm gonna use it. Are there what I think? What some people are saying is it's like <laughs> I just, that took me a second. <laughs> if you ever ride your bike again, yeah. Um, are there? Is there a competitor for Strava? It, some are seeing, some are saying that like, okay, is this like a way that they're trying to like monopolize their data? So like maybe when they roll out their own training, because the Strava doesn't really have like a training platform, right? It will make it easier for users to like just use their platform. So in let's say they are doing that. Let's say we are the conspiracies are true, mm. and that's what they're doing. So right? people are saying, I, I'm just speculating, mm. right? But let maybe they it's are good speculation. What are the competitors? Ride with GPS. People post there. There is like a Garmin share thing, but people don't post there. I'm friends with one person. It's Ben Stone from NBX. It's just me and Ben. <laughs> Sharing uh, rides. He's yeah, got a baby I, at home. He's not riding as much. I got no friends I on I mean, there. there's, there's a, connect? a lot of apps where you can track your own things on, Yeah, like your Garmin thing. And you're saying yeah. there even is a feed on There is on like a, a social feed on that that I don't but think But yeah, as far use. as like the, the in-depth sort of social media aspect of Strava, I yeah. don't think there's a competitor as far as I know. There was like Map My Run and map my ride, which were yep. initially by like Under Armour, I think. But I, I looked them up today when I was looking at the notes. I don't. They must have gotten bought bought out. They I remember that. They weren't map Under my Armour. Ride. And then there's like there's like Nike Run Club. I know that's an app that a lot of people use. Yep. But I don't think I was actually just talking to someone about that the other day. I don't think that there's a social media aspect to that, like a okay. feed page. I don't think there is. I think that. it's more similar to like the Apple Watch or like the fitness. Yeah, I think like it's Apple more just fitness. like personal tracking. You know, because Apple Fitness tried to do like a sort of social thing. You could like add friends and see other people's like rings, you know. Yeah. And I had three people well, on there. Yeah, yeah. But I don't I don't see that as them ever. I don't think they were ever trying to be. No, they weren't the trying to be. The same type of thing. No, I'm just trying Strava. to think like what is like, you know, because Strava is unique in the way that it is social right like yeah. they have made good changes in like allowing you to add video and like the photos are nice and i i do think that that quick edit um is encouraging people to change ride titles and do write-ups because it, it puts it right there for you instead of just uploading morning ride morning ride morning ride lunch ride you know what i mean like yeah it's right there and so yeah sure you can just click done you know, and that's fine if you do. It doesn't really matter. But I do think that if there are more people that change their ride titles, it makes Strava a little bit more interesting. And I'm not talking about listen. And I, I love you if you if you if you use Bandock and I love you, then I love you. But if you use Bandock, I don't know why you I use knew that's that. That's what you were gonna say. I hate that. <laughs> I hate Bandock.com. I think it's so silly. Um, and <laughs> do people pay for it? Because if people I don't, if people I, no. pay for it, no. I really hope they don't. If they're not paying for it and it's just like a fun free service, it's not really that different than like, 
you know, what when the weather gets posted on your ride by some other third party app. Yeah, know? right. That's what I was thinking of. Like, yeah, because there's all these like third party things that you sort of you just tack on, right? And it's enabled all the time, right? Those and, things and are going to be affected. They're a little bit of like a convoluted process to set up in the first place. Yes, and get them connected and give the permissions and all that stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if some people. And including myself, I thought I, it took me a while. I remember to turn off that like that weather like add on thing. Yeah, we. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to get that. A few of us off. used that for a while. Yeah, and it was fun. It was cool, but then I was like, uh, whatever. You, I don't you really, can see the weather in the information anyway. So and whatever. I don't really but care. Like maybe after people, my ride. maybe people literally can't figure out how to turn it off. Oh, you think Bandock is like, that's the case? They don't know how to unsubscribe? Maybe. And I'm not picking on any specific person. No. I, I could have been guilty of it too, but I never had it in the first place. True. But it's just, I know that True. those things can be a little bit convoluted and confusing on how yeah. you turn them on and off and get them connected. Listen, so maybe if, it's just like, ah, screw it. If you are a it. victim of Bandock.com, please reach out and I will help you unsubscribe. <laughs> it's John at it's just a hill.com, J-O-N at it's just a hill.com. If you are a victim of Bandock, we yeah. at the podcast here will help you um john will help you <laughs> is the overall tech support yeah i'm the tech support <laughs> um actually my i'm sure my dad's listening to this i hope he is i know he is he always says that he loves the episodes he's so nice about that great great supportive uh, thank father you, john. um what was i saying oh he will ask me tech support i am i will be going to florida in the relatively short amount of time and i know that like of course he will hug me and say hello but then he'll be like can you help me with my garment you know or something to that effect <laughs> can you help me with my varia uh he's like oh i get the i get the varia with the camera i've never used the camera what the hell dad you get the you get the <laughs> one with the camera you're not using it all right love you dad yeah. sorry to put you on blast there a john bit. get all your questions laid out for this john I was actually, yeah, get all your questions get laid out. Get ready to me. go. Get it all done. Yeah, hand, me a, hand me a slip of paper when I walk in the door. He's, I'm sure he's going to pick me up from the airport. Again, very nice, nice very supportive. Um, great dad. Um, right before you came, he was texting me. And I was like, I'm sorry, Brian's going to be here. I, I can't. Like, we were going to start talking. A subject has been, had been broached. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we can't talk about this right now. Sorry. <laughs> it was bike related, too. Oh, look out. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm ready to move on and head to the second and final segment of the show. Are you good with that? Do you have anything else you want to say about the Strava API changes? Uh, no, I mean, I'll be curious to see what happens with it. Yeah. I didn't know about it to begin with. It will probably make it more of a stink of it than it needs to be made. Hopefully. Hmm. But I thought it was something interesting to talk about, and I saw a lot of yeah. chat about it online. No, well, well I, should, I should say I think the conspiracy theory, if you will, of like, well, yeah. they're doing this to sort of lock up their data. Right. And then they're going to roll out their own training platform and weather platform and all the things that you, you know, you have to use their apps if you want right. to utilize those features and it keeps it all in their one uh, ecosystem. And maybe so that's kind that. of an interesting thing. Not that I'm not that I would buy into it, but no, put on your tinfoil hats, folks. Strava's trying to take <laughs> over the cycling world, um, which I don't think that would be a bad thing because then, you know, that's just going to force other social media type apps to come in and fill that void that's like maybe a more affordable oh, space okay. yep, or maybe not quite so serious, you know, where it's just a little bit, a little bit more casual. Do we, is this, I don't know. is this a call, is this like a call to arms? Like, should we, or should someone make this app? Maybe. All right. Maybe not. It wasn't what I was thinking, but I, I know you've talked about making some type of social media apps for. Yeah. So I've. Hell. I, it will, this will not be a social media app. The app that I am, the app that I am developing, I can show you my notes. I'm as far, I'm as close as I've ever been. <laughs> um, uh, it will, I don't think it will have a social media. I definitely have said that in the past. Um, but yes, now I'm being a little bit too. It's more just cryptic. like a personal utility app. Correct. In a way. Correct. A personal Obviously, utility I'm not going to say what it is. Like Epic Ride Weather would be. Yeah, like Epic Ride Weather. A, would be. a ride, an app that a enhances companion. your ride experience in 100% a companion. Yes. Okay. So, speaking of Strava, speaking of the internet so much, this is what we call smooth transitioning in podcasting. And I have once again pulled things from the internet. 
Oh. And I would like to talk about some of the some of these posts. So I, I did this on the past couple episodes with some of the guys from NBX. And I spend a good amount of time on like forums and thinking about cycling. And, you know, these are some of the things that I've come across. And like maybe I comment on them, but mostly I don't. I just save them to talk about on the podcast. So this is from uh, the user Fix It Money on the cycling subreddit. And they say, uh, night road cycling, good idea or death trap? Did you read this in, in advance by any I chance? I did. Obviously, in the Northern Hemisphere, we've lost the morning and evening light. But do you still ride in the dark? I'm in a remote area and have decent lights. If I'm not doing serious efforts, how bad is night riding? You got thoughts? My you got thoughts on this? My first thought is, you read that really well. It was a nice performance. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very nice of you. Uh, they, oh, you're welcome. Wow, I take that as such a compliment. Uh, like, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm going to lean more towards the death trap aspect. You think it's a death trap? I guess it just depends on where you live. Um, okay, I, so I, like, why so, is it more dangerous? Because it's dark? Yes, I think it's be because it's dark. Okay. I'm not there's saying I less, disagree. I'm there's just, less what? visibility yep. for the drivers, potentially. Yep. Now, I guess I'm going to go through. This is like the con list. Less visibility simply because it's dark. Drivers, especially once they get to a certain age and things start to drop off, like e even, say, at, at my age... I'm finding a little bit harder to see at night. Yes. Than I that's, did ten years ago. That's what I would say. Right? Yeah. So and it's like we're only in our thirties. I know. You listen to you gonna be going out doing a ride where where Moral. you know there could be someone that's eight. Eminem's a years grandpa old driving a car and yeah. they have a, a hard enough time seeing a right. a, a blank road, like a, a clear road to begin with. Um there's go, there's also gonna be more animals out. I think like cross nocturnal roads. ones. Yeah, nocturnal ones. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might not be true. <laughs> but no, it, I like. It just, I like it just these seems points. a little unsafe. But at the same time, right? Are we going to make counterpoints? Even now? the most like, okay. yeah, I will say pros are that you even have the most consumer level like reflective gear on even cheap bikes where well, you got reflective pieces on the wheels and the pedals and on your handlebar and on yeah. behind your seat where it's like those things are actually going to show up a lot more right. those are mainly for right nighttime right because they're retroflective materials that like yeah. when light hits them the light so actually back like you will there are also drivers less, will hopefully see them less cars on the road okay maybe, depends on the time maybe not at 6 p.m yeah, not at not so at five or six p.m. See, when it's already thing, dark. Right? And it's it is December. You know? it, it is late November. The sunset is at four nineteen yeah. today. Yeah. So even five o'clock, it's dark out. Right. Yeah. Then you know most people would call five o'clock rush hour. Right. Yeah. That I think is probably more dangerous for all the reasons that you mentioned. Right. It's just generally harder yeah. to see, and the volume of traffic is not any lower than it would be. Let's say it. 9 a.m. Right. right. So it's the same rush right. hour. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, I have done a good amount of rides at like stupidly early in the morning, like mm -hmm. 4 or 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Not as much as some people on Strava, which that like, Rich, if you're watching <laughs> this, you are a madman. I just love to see it. It's just like night ride, like 3.58 a.m. Oh, yeah. This guy gets it in before work. He's kicking ass. And God, man, just yeah. love to see it. That but has always blew my mind. I do think that time of day, it's super hard to get up, right? Who the fuck wants to get up that early? You need to be a certain kind of motivated to do it. That time of day is very different. There's hardly anyone out. Mm -hmm. I was more intimidated by animals, actually, like deer. I'd be scared that a deer was going to run across the road mm -hmm. because what does happen when you ride when it's dark, and even if you're using really good lights, if you're on roads that don't have a lot of light on them, it sort of promotes like tunnel vision mm -hmm. because the sides of the road 
are now basically absolutely invisible, right? Yeah. And I'm not talking because your dark. peripheral division, right? It's just so dark. Yeah. And I remember the first time uh, Brian, Cody, and I bike packed, we were like middle of the night bombing down this like gravel road in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. And it was like terrifying in a way that like we couldn't see anything. Hmm. It was very dark. And all we could see was what our lights were showing us, which like can also be more treacherous, right? Like you can only see certain parts of the trail that you're on. If something were to run out in front of you, you know what I mean? Like all of that. Um, but riding on the road that you know, and like this user says, maybe not doing serious efforts, right? Like I would, I, what was happening was like, I was working like in a studio, like four or five days in a row. And I wasn't, I, it was probably before I was like even accepting of Zwift. So I was like, I just want to get outside. I feel like you can get a great workout on Zwift, but being outside in the air is nice. And so I'd be like, okay, I was just going to, I'm just going to go outside and ride my bike at four 30 or whatever on roads that I know. And it was, it's quite nice, you know? Um, when it's cold, that adds to it too, right? That's another thing that comes with this time of year with all this less daylight. So it's like colder. And so it's like, is it really worth bundling up? Like I said earlier, I mean, how bad is it is what this person asks. You know, I, I, I would ride in the dark. I think there's a benefit to getting fresh air, like I said, but there are also so many other ways to do it that like, I get it. If you don't like Zwift, you don't like Zwift. I, I mean, I get it. And you just want to be outside. That's fine. Um, I'm not, you know, to each their own, but I don't know. I don't know if it's inherently more dangerous, I guess. I, I, I can't, I'm not easily convinced that it's inherently more dangerous because like lights work better when it's dark. So like now you have bl bright flashing lights, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's harder when pe for people to drive. I agree. I don't like driving at night as much as I like driving during the day. Right. I'm not, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, but I'm still like, it's not like I'm like, oh, <laughs> But still, <laughs> is that a cyclist? I can't oh, see. I can't see. <laughs> um, uh, no, you know, and this is something that, like, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but last year I wanted to do this shortest night ride uh, of, you know, the shortest night of the year is like June 21st as it's like the longest day. And people were like showing concern for me doing this because they were concerned about like drunk drivers. Mm -hmm. Actually, like that's a, what I was just thinking. Because it was like a Friday or a Saturday night, which is a good point, right? Yeah. Um, I think any night of the week. Right. People are more in now, like that, then like they're so. Yeah, you're calling that. Yeah, so a drunk driver, it's in a way a distracted driver that is different than someone looking at their phone. But I also can't believe how many uh, motorists I see just looking at their phones like actively for any amount of seconds. N nevertheless, like 10 seconds, like uh, it's just wild to me. Like I, I try to always be super aware of my surroundings and like have my head on a swivel. We talked about my dad earlier. My mom loves to say head on a swivel. So now we've shouted out both my parents, <laughs> great supportive parents. Um, yeah. Head on a swivel is great. Head on a swivel is great. And I do think about that often and it, you know, you do need to be uh, as aware of your surroundings as possible and riding in the dark is also going to limit that. So I don't know. I, I'm, I, 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 I think, it's a harder question than I, I thought it was going to be. I think being being distracted, being a distracted driver, like not even talking about drunk driving, just like yeah. a distracted driver, there's going to be more people that were just like out having dinner or or people out with their friends. Yeah. They're in a different mental state. Yeah, true. Than they were driving to or from work or school. Um it's also just so it's it's done so much less that people aren't used to seeing cyclists doing those type of rides and being on those type of roads True. at True. those hours, uh, and then and then you have you have the the significantly increased risk of drunk drivers. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a real factor. I mean, there's going to be drunk drivers at any time of the day. Right. But the number I'm right. sure will. I don't yeah, know the I mean, statistics on any of this, but right. you got to assume it increases at night. Sure. Um, the thing that I always w thought about with like really early morning rides or even really any morning rides that were like before rush hour or at 
in rush hour even is mm-hmm. like driving through more suburban areas yeah or just even if you're going on a road that has a, like houses on it no matter where it is like people just maybe pulling out of their driveway oh. or backing out of their driveway and it's like maybe they're maybe they're only half awake yeah you know and so i almost felt like even if it's light out early morning rides you still have like even the flashing light on the fl- flashing light on the front of your bike just that people really make sure they see you they're just yeah. they're just pulling out of their driveway they're not thinking anything's gonna come at them they're, they're only looking for a car right you know um but then i just think it also has to do with your location i mean you're talking about cities right there's more street lights right commuter biking is more of a thing just people using bikes as their mode of transportation is way more common so if you're in a city i don't i don't think it's even a thought of course right. you'd ride a bike in a city at night <laughs> right right i mean i mean right. I think that'd be really fun yeah right right uh but then also if if you live out in the woods right and it's just dirt roads near you and you know there's barely any traffic and because it's so dark you're gonna have to have really good lights on your bike anyway that seems pretty safe yeah and See, probably really like, fun as well. It like it's it's interesting that like that this the way the this po- this question is posed in a way that they want you to say it's bad or it's good, right? Like, and this is not a knock on the person that posted the question. They didn't say like, how can I help my vis- visibility when riding at night, right? That's like a productive way of seeing this question. I think like I need to ride at night. My, you know, my circumstances have arised so that I need to ride when it's dark out. How do I make myself more visible? Instead, when you say is like, how bad is night riding? You're forced to be like, oh, it's bad or it's good. But the thing is, is like cycling is a calculated risk, right? No matter what. Yeah. And so you're just now weighing different risks and it is a probably yeah. a risk weighing that different m- risks. Most, most people don't think about because they don't ride when it's dark, but it's really no different than like the question of like, well, do, do I wear a helmet? Is wearing a helmet bad or not? You know, or like, is like, is wearing orange bad or not? Right. Like, no, these are all like different things that you can do because you're like, okay, my priorities are, I want to ride my bike. Circumstances mean I can only ride them when it's dark. What do I do? You get great lights, put one on your handlebars, put one on your helmet, Get a flashing light for the back. You know wear, what I mean? Wear reflective Wear things. reflective stuff. Wear yeah. high-vis stuff that's yeah. also reflective. Yeah. So the, the more I think about right. it, it's like you, you could actually be more easily visible yeah. and stand out way more against the road right. and the trees at night. Right. Right. If, if, if you choose to they wear have, those things. They have those, like they legitimately sell kits. I know that this is, they, they sell them at MBX that you can put that are just like reflective stickers. Mm. So you could like, deck your gear yeah. out you can put them on the back of your I mean, shoes like i i have actually the shoes i wear all the time yeah. are fully reflective yes. reflective right. i know the ones and you talking, and yeah. you can have full kit like that there's a guy that walks in my neighborhood at, yep. at night yep like you i think he walks like early morning and in the evening and he has of like pants and jacket that match that are just like my shoes, how they're like fully re- yeah, they're yeah. Like covered in a fully reflective coating. Yeah. And let me tell you, you see that guy from so far away. I bet. Where it's almost, it, where from a very far distance, you can tell there's a person walking. Yeah. And it just looks like a ghost. Yeah, sure. Because you, you can really see it from so far, far away. Because it's it's not like green. It's it's like the same color as it's my like shoes. Silvery, where it's silvery, right. It's like silver. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. And it's just like... There's this figure walking because you can't see their head or hands. Right, you just see this jacket. It's almost moving. like a floating space it's, blanket. Yeah, which I'm sure you yeah. love. <laughs> oh, it's exactly why I love it. Yeah, you love it. It makes you me think of space. space. Now you love space, but I will say we, I didn't think we were going to even bring it up this we time. We both have. Um, oh fuck! I thought I had a whale on my sweatshirt. Um, it's a polar bear. Do you have a polar bear on there? No, you have a. Nah, no. Polar so bear. we both have animals that would Swan. live in the Arctic. Orca yeah, whale we do. and yeah, polar right. bear. Yeah. Um, but no space theme. No space. You theme. love space. Any space updates? Yeah. Uh, space updates? Uh, he put me on the spot. All right. Never mind. Uh, um, if I, I think of one before the episode's over. I'm going to save these next two for another time. I think that last yeah. one was good. We talked about it a lot, and I thought it was a good thing yeah. to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just save the other ones. Sure. Um, shout out to you, of course. 
you haven't been there in a while. I've been no. doing this. I did the last two episodes at the at NBX, and so I'm like, do well, do I do the whole thing at the end that I normally say? And I normally get too self conscious to do it, and I'm just like, all right, thanks, see you later, and that's the end of the episode. But oh. normally, what I have written down here, what I yeah, should yeah, say yeah. at the end of every single one, and maybe now that I have this new studio space, I can just record intros and outros here. Oh, we probably should. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But we don't need to. We're peeking behind the curtain too yeah. much. That's how. Yeah. The, that's, don't listen to what we just said. No, no, no. That's how the. That's how. What do they say? Forget that's how what the we said. donuts are made. Is that the phrase? That's how the sausage is made. Sausage. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I'm that's always the, thinking about donuts. <laughs> that's why. It's, that's how the donuts are made. Don't pay attention to how the cookie crumbles. Yes, no, but it's sausage. It's sausage. Um, Brian, you know your podcasting partner in crime. I've said it before. You do all the editing, uh, audio editing for this, and so yeah, thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing it all the time. No problem. Thanks for coming back. Coming to the thanks new, for having me. Coming to the new space. I don't think we were actively keeping me away. You were just you were doing great <laughs> interviews at MBX, and no, no, they've been was, very good. Episodes. It wasn't like thank you for allowing me to <laughs> beg you to come back. That's not what I meant. <laughs> yes, thanks for letting me beg. He made Brian made me get down on both knees yeah. and say. Please edit the audio for me. I need help alert, knowing about gain. I need to know more about gain <laughs> uh, and bit no, rates. No, I actually i I told John that I was coming over to record the podcast. I said you've shut me out long enough. Yeah, I'm getting back on the thing. Right, right. I heard you're showing off all your fucking shoes now, so I need to get in there. That's what I. That's what you said to me. Uh, make sure to check out MBX, the official bike shop of It's Just a Hill. Um, I don't. I'm cross is here and it, it's almost over at this point. Um, but hopefully you checked it out. And if you didn't, then, you know, it is the winter, but right around the corner, there's going to be oh winter bike league, winter, winter bike, bike league. league. The first stage and the last stage will be at MBX. Oh, yep. and Brian can't come. Oh, Bake off ride. I can't make it. Bake off ride. December 14th. Brian can't make it. He cannot defend his title yeah, from last year. Uh, the, but the first ever defending champion. Right. Won't be able to make it. But won't let, be able to make it. What Sorry. that means, though, is that in year three, because this will be the second annual, in year three, we'll get to have a face-off from the first year's winner and the second year's winner. If you're sure. riding your bike by then, you have a year yeah. to learn how to ride your bike again. We'll see. Um, and that, but that uh, is on December 14th. The details are up on our Strava page. <laughs> and there will be a cake platter trophy like there was last year that has the root engraved yes. on it and so a locally made 3d printed yes cake tray um wow now i can't even think of what the what the they're normally called but yeah cake like a cake, cake platter a cake, stand. cake stands yeah i have a mini one um made by elliot farmer who lives in providence yes thank you elliot great product and really cool stuff yeah we had we we got mini ones for like me you and ryan got mini ones yeah right little little mementos yeah little mementos so remember the first annual well, this is the second annual bring a baked good you can check out the full details on strava i made a route i believe it's like 38 or 42 miles or something so maybe about a little bit more than two hours and after the ride we're going to come back you don't even have to come to the ride just show up to the shop Bring baked goods, and we're going to do a taste test. Everyone's going to be able to eat and sample the things, and we're going to vote. And like I said, the winner is going to be crowned the 2024 IJA Bake Off Champion. And I really, really mm. want to cover it like it's an episode of yeah. uh, Great British Baking That'd Show. So maybe I can get someone to man a camera. And I that's why I, um, <laughs> I know Paul Hollywood doesn't have a beard, but that's why I bleached my <laughs> beard. <laughs> so I could look more like Paul Hollywood. I bleached my hair too because he has white hair. I was um, just thinking how great it would be. So we do like do like three years of this style bake off. Yeah. And then fourth year is like <laughs> everybody has to stay in their cycling kit. No, that doesn't matter. Never mind. Oh, I no. I said that. And oh. then everyone has to do a technical challenge. Okay. Yeah. Like I in like someone's that. garage, we all have tables. Yeah, we have to like fix a flat with yeah. fondant. Uh, of course, the backbone of this cycling collective, our group rides. So, yeah, I mentioned there's the Bake Off ride. Uh, there will be some rides to support the Grinchy Grimly Toy Drive. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, that is an event on Facebook, and uh, they're raising toys to give to kids, like, in the holidays. And there's a bunch of different gravel routes, and you basically you drop a toy off um, at a house where the address is you know, on the internet. Fuck, I should have it in front of me. Um, but it's near the Summit General Store, which what used well, to be the Summit General you Store. You can put it up if you want. Yeah, I can put it up on the screen. So if you're listening to this audio on, uh, you should be watching the video on YouTube. Go here, 
drop off your toy here, which will enter you the raffle, and then go ride your bike around those uh, nice gravel roads that the Grinch put together for you. And um, and uh, then there's going to be an event on December 22nd, which will be the biathlon. That's you ride mm. a 20-mile team time trial through what I know are going to be some pretty gnarly sections on gravel bikes. Some people will probably ride fat bikes. That's the type of track that some of that goes through. And then you will shoot at targets. And that is a two toy entry. And that also enters you into the <laughs> raffle. Sounds really fun. And gets people, you know, um, gets kids toys this time of year, which is like super nice. Um, and so, yeah, then, like I said, Winter Bike League, that'll be starting up in 2025 in January. We'll have six stages again through the three months. And the first stage, the last stage will be at MBX. There's a WhatsApp chat, our Discord. Like and subscribe this video. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a rating on your podcast platform. Share with your bike friends. See you on the back roads. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Jeff. Bye. Bye. We are It's Just a Hill, a cycling club that promotes inclusion, judgment-free with no gatekeepers. Focused on creating content from behind the handlebars to in the studio, It's Just a Hill is producing videos and podcasts to spread the message that cycling is for everyone. We are focused on reminding everyone that riding your bike can help you overcome any obstacle. Because after all, it's just a hill. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. It's very challenging work.